I wanted to hop on real quick and um, give my thoughts on the latest uh, breaking news that the uh, the current president of the United States has agreed after much pushing and prodding and pleading to step down and not seek re-election. And he has chosen to endorse um, bees in head uh, Kamala Harris. <laughs> Uh, as um, as the candidate moving forward against Orange Man in the uh, in the puppet show that is American politics. Uh, if you're bought into this and you don't think it's pro wrestling at this point, I don't know what to say to you. Uh, it's kind of just it's kind of I view it as entertainment at this point. Um, now, I will make a disclaimer by saying I'm pretty sure y'all have seen a million and one streams, videos, all that. So I'm not just going to go through the same sort of shit and make you listen to my take, which will probably be similar to a lot of other independent media takes. So what I thought would be a little more useful and a little more helpful is, uh, is giving my, uh, my psychology take on this breaking news and some of the, the decisions surrounding the news and kind of break that down just so you kind of understand some things. For one, the confusion as to why the fuck it took so long for him to do this, why he endorsed Harris, and uh, well, what can we expect moving forward? First and foremost, the reason why it took so long is because Joe Biden being a narcissist, a lot of the people in this political sphere are, after all, he has been suffering repeated wounds to his ego about his age. I mean, just look at Trump calling him Sleepy Joe for a number of years. Um, not just that, but also concerns from his base. Now, as a narcissist, Joe Biden can't ignore these retorts. And so he's created this, uh, he's likely created this defense mechanism to kind of preserve his self-esteem. The reality that his allies are all calling on him to step down after the massive ego wound that was uh, the debate pretty much resulted in him painting them all black, if you will, because they was a represented a challenge to his self, uh, sense of control. His response essentially was no different from a temper tantrum a five-year-old uh, engages in when they don't get their way. He essentially uh, remained defiant, said he was going to stay in because that'll show him. And uh, psychologically, it makes him feel like he's regained some sense of control and also uh, punished his betrayers, if you will, because he demanded loyalty from these people. And the second they, the second they felt like, you know, maybe it wasn't a good idea for him to stay in. He dragged the whole party down. Orange Man would come in and the end of democracy or whatever the fuck you think was going to happen uh, would happen full tilt. So his play was essentially, oh, OK, they, they need me to step down because they're afraid that their party's going to lose. So I'm going to say, fuck you. And I'm going to stay in because they aren't being loyal to me. So the way I regulate my self-esteem, make myself feel better, is to spite them. That's the only reason he stayed in. It's because people stopped in his narcissistic lens on the world, um, granting him fealty. They stopped providing him with, you know, constant glazing, constant, uh, you know, unquestioned loyalty. Now, why did he endorse Harris? This is a really good question. Uh, it could just be, you know, at the end of the day, because she's the VP, it's probably the cleanest endorsement. But he, him personally, not his party, not the grander decision of everything. I might have a little insight on that. So the reason why I think um, he felt he felt uh, OK with endorsing Harris was the same driving factor between narcissists having children. Because she is essentially, like narcissists view their children, a future extension of him. Kamala, in his eyes, represents his legacy, whatever the fuck that means, and how his legacy will live on. Because his time as dear leader is kind of wrapping to a close. He has to he has to think about he has to think about how am I going to 
have myself live on, have my extension, have my grandiosity uh, carried forward into the future, if you will. Um, if I'm not at the head of the ticket and I'm not the guy up on the podium talking to a whole nation. Kamal also didn't appear to be like anyone on shit list, at least not if, uh, from what I've seen. If I'm mistaken, please leave a comment below. Let me know I'm wrong and I will, uh, I will correct that post haste. But I, uh, I personally couldn't find anything. I'm not clear if she was on the list of people who were telling him to step down. It seemed like she was kind of loyal to the end, if it, as it were. So as opposed to his allies being painted black for them challenging his, his control and challenging his competence and wounding his ego, she seemed to be loyal to the end. Which is why in his head, the way the narcissist, the way just a lot of disordered people view the world in black and white and fucking shades in between, um, she was painted white, which is probably why that letter made her out to seem like this incredible choice. Spoiler alert, she's not. Holy fuck, she's not. He could have chosen a baked potato to follow up, and it wouldn't even matter anyway. Because the donors would probably be fine with that. Be like, you know what, we could just put a baked potato up there, we can have a voiceover. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, the rich people will get theirs. Now, finally, what to expect moving forward? This is a good one. Um, so if Kamala does win, which I will go on record as saying it's not likely, because my personal feelings, as someone outside of the duopoly, and who doesn't believe in two-party systems or the electoralism we have in North America in general, um, you know, because I, I think if at any point you need to hold your nose and vote for a lesser evil, that's not democratic. You got a fucked up way of going about it. You got to figure out a better system. You should be voting for people who you feel represent your actual needs and uh, the direction you want your country to head in. And throughout my whole lifetime, I've never felt like I had that choice. I felt like the closest uh, choice for me personally, what spoke to my personal convictions, what uh, spoke to what I felt was important. The only person I felt that way about was Jack Layton. And, um, you know, he didn't win. And then unfortunately he passed away. Uh, but, you know, I feel like it would be a much different Canada in an alternate universe if he did. But again, under capitalism, you can't really hope for that much. Um, at the end of the day, he could have just been another disappointment like Obama, like Trudeau, like all these people who have these big hopes and dreams for all the people. Everybody gets ice cream or whatever the fuck, and then they get into power and they shit the bed. We don't have electoral reform still up here in Canada. We still got first past the post voting. That was what Trudeau ran on, which is why I voted for him. So, anyway... I feel like the establishment has chosen Trump to be um, their new figurehead, essentially. Um, and my God, take just go look up his cabinet considerations at this point. You've got every swamp monster on Earth. So I feel like, MAGA people, I'm sorry, but I feel like you're being taken for a ride. I feel like you were taken for a ride the first time. And I tried to speak up. You all got really upset. And I get why. Because you thought he was going to be the guy to fix all the bullshit. And I know that feeling. Because I thought that about multiple politicians up here in Canada. But, uh... Here's the thing. If you don't learn from it, then you're going to repeat the same mistakes. Anyway, what do we expect moving forward, at least from Joseph Robinette Brandon? Um, is he's probably going to speak very highly of whatever decision Kamala makes. And inject the same, like, he gets it from his dad energy that you see narcissistic fathers, for example, um, you know, use whenever their children live up to the unrealistic expectations of them. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, he's forced a viewer as an avatar of his grandiosity. Um, I think he'll be very outspoken and supportive, but I don't think he'll miss an opportunity to kind of inject himself uh, if Kamala does get in, inject himself into like, oh, she got that from me, 
Because again, that's that's how narcissists operate. Anyway, a little bit short and sweet, but I kind of just wanted to do a bit of a psych bend here to kind of break down uh, some of the things that, you know, might some of the aspects of this whole uh, momentous event that might not be covered and might be useful. Because at the end of the day, a lot of these politicians read from the same manual, especially narcissists. I could also realistically do the psychological breakdown for Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, uh, Donald Trump for sure. He's, in my opinion, the closest personality-wise, uh, psychology-wise, to Joe Biden. They're very similar people. That's actually why they don't get along. Because you can't have two narcs in a room. Okay? They'll start, they'll start feeding off each other. Anyway, thanks for listening to this. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, my God... There is no week in history where Lenin was more right that, you know, sometimes decades do happen in a week because this is a fucking week. Um, anyway, as always, uh, check out Indie News Network. Check out Politically Homeless. We'll probably have more updates by Thursday, right? Um, and yeah, let's see. Let's see what other uh, what other act three of this play has to offer. Have a good one, everybody.